All right. There's a report commissioned by the U.S. Department of State on AI safety. It's called an action plan to increase the safety and security of advanced AI. I looked at the highlights and I thought I must talk. Uh, here are the highlights. The first thing it recommends is the Congress should make it illegal to train AI models using more than a certain level of compute power. There's a big issue with that. Fundamentally, if you want to make something safe, it doesn't make sense to make it be able to think less. Make, it'll make decisions based on limited compute power and uh, that doesn't mean it'll be safer. If there's a switch in the wall and I have to figure out what's the impact of flipping the switch, more compute power is just fine. I think the challenge we have is why is the switch there and what does it do? Does it set, set off a bomb or does it actually set you know turn on the light so that is the fundamental thing that we should be addressing not the level of uh, computing power any AI model has in fact giving it more computing power might lead to more safer systems out there so that's one thing i disagree the next statement says the threshold uh, will be recommended by a new ai federal agency um, and the agency would set it just above the cutting edge models of today, which is GPT-4 and Gemini. Now, how did that level come into existence? Well, it's because those models are already there and therefore we cannot rescind anything. So just make it a little bit higher. Again, a problem because that's encouraging all the AI labs out there to roll out their models, even if they're not safe at this point ASAP because Otherwise, they'll be, it'll be hard, harder to roll them out. Um, I think this message isn't uh, helping uh, our society. And the third thing is that new AI agency should require AI companies on the frontier of the industry to obtain government permission to train and deploy new models above a certain lower threshold. Now, while it seems fine, um, two things happen. One is we will slow down uh, the development of AI and that will, will create a problem for the existing labs and they'll say, okay, let's roll it out as soon as possible, whatever we have. But the bigger question I have is, how is the government going to decide what should be allowed versus not? On one hand, we are saying these AI labs with all their researchers and experts are not able to determine what's safe and not. And, somehow government will look at the trillions of weights and say, oh, this is safe and that other one is not safe. I don't see how that works, um, but let's move on. The next line says, authorities should also urgently, quote unquote, consider outlawing the publication of weights, inner workings of the powerful AI models. For example, under open source licenses with violations possibly punishable by jail time. There are many insights that can be derived from that particular statement. First of all, we are saying it is outlawed or going to be, I hope not, to publish in open source the weights and inner workings of the AI model. Now, already we have Llama 3 out there. Um, it is creating a large ecosystem. Open source has traditionally made things more open, more secure, more safe. Government uses open source a lot. Um, I think the worry here is that if we share the weights and the models, then it might be misused, right? Which I think is okay in the sense that nuclear secrets are kept secret but in the case of llms i think the bar of somebody reproducing the capabilities that one country has produced is actually quite low you need a few smart llm engineers and a few million dollars and then you could do that um, and the cost of doing that is also dramatically going down so given a choice between being more open versus being more secretive, I believe that being more open is better because 
at the end of the day, when somebody is using an AI model, they need to know why is it thinking that way? Like, do we actually outlaw a human saying, oh, they are a Democrat or a Republican or which religion they belong to? Because now they are exposing how their inner workings work, how they think. In fact, we need to know and we need to demand that any AI model that we are using, we understand. Like, what's the, what are, what's the data set it comes from? What biases it might have? And that will help make it safer because I'm going to use the AI models that align with how I think rather than be forced to use AI models built by companies that by government law are not allowed to share the inner workings with me. Anyway, uh, and of course, it, it suggests that um, violations are punishable by jail, jail time. And I'll talk about it later. Next statement is that the government should further tighten controls on the manufacturing and export of AI chips. I don't have much opinion there. I think, uh, you know, there's, there's nothing stopping the world from building more chips. But um, the, the main point there is federal funding will be given to alignment research. And alignment is also, quote unquote, now here's the challenge. <clears throat> when we say alignment research, we're essentially saying that we will build AI models that think like humans. And alignment means that, oh, this is going to do what we want it to do. Now in this particular report, what they suggest is to align humans towards what this report wants there is a threat of jail time. That's an insight there. Humans align with other humans because of fear of God, fear of other humans, fear of jail, or just shame. That is how we align smart humans. Are we talking about aligning AI, which is like humans in the same way? And if that is true, then is government going to fund that research? Like, let's figure out how do you instill the fear of God or fear of the government in AI models and how that's going to pan out. I think there's a lot to debate and discuss. Um, fundamentally, this topic of creating safety and security by Making a few people in charge, whether it's in a, per, in, in a private company or government, I don't think is a solution. The real solution comes around creating a framework for decision making. When folks talk about guardrails for AI, I think the, what we need to learn from is what do guardrails mean in real life? I might have a bullet train that's much more powerful than a single human. It's more powerful than most machines and yet we feel safe with a bullet train because it's on rails and it cannot go outside of that the degrees of freedom is low that is how like i'm on a street here and i see a bunch of cars these cars each of these cars is far more powerful than a human and yet we don't fear these systems going rogue because a human is in charge in the, tr in the case of the bullet train, the human is in charge, but also the machine cannot go rogue anyway. It's so limited. We have had superhuman AI for many decades, like chess playing AI. That is far more powerful than a human, but only at playing chess. So there is a discussion to be had around how to make AI safe by thinking about how general it is and how safe it is. And in terms of power, we need to understand that Humans will want AI to be a lot more powerful than a regular human, not just equal. Um, learning from the industrial age, that's what we have done with all machines. All machines that we have built generally are more powerful than a single human. What we need to do is get into that debate rather than figuring out how a few people can control the future of humanity here. So let's have that debate, guys. Um, thank you for listening in.